Hi everyone, welcome to the video and in this video we are going to code a deep CNN architecture in TensorFlow using a low level graph API in TensorFlow. So the architecture looks something like this. So I'm going to show you the architecture in detail and we are going to code this entire architecture. So without wasting much of time, let's get started. Hi, welcome to the video. This is uh, what we were talking about. So we are going to code this entire architecture uh, in TensorFlow. That is a low level graph API. So let me just uh, show you uh, the architecture that what we are about to uh, code in TensorFlow. So this is a pretty intensive, uh, it's going to be a pretty intense uh, video. So please stop, stop the video, understand each and everything and um, uh, make sure you understand everything. So let me just pull out an image of a deep, uh, uh, deep CNN architecture that we are about to code. So here is the architecture. All right. So let me uh, zoom in a little bit. Trying to zoom that. So you can pause the video right here and uh, make sure to understand what is ha what I have drawn on the paper. So you can stop it and I'm going to start the lecture right from here. So let's get started. So I'm going to close this. So guys, we are about to code a deep CNN architecture, which uh, looks something like this. Uh, let me open my notes so I can also simultaneously um, show you. And I'm going to take a color as black. And in the next video, maybe we will try to code it. And it's going to be fun. So here we have the input image, which is 28. I'm going to explain you everything right now, step by step. We have an input image, which is 28 by 28, right? And I am performing right now four convolutions, one, two, three, and four. These dots, these black boxes uh, refer to convolution, right? So we are performing four uh, convolution. After that, uh, remember, whenever you perform convolution, uh, usually the size of the image uh, decreases. So what we try to do is we usually pair it with zeros so that the size is um, usually same. So for an example, uh, to be more specific, what I'm trying to say, whenever you do a convolution of 28 by 28 with a five cross five, the output image would be N minus M plus one. That means uh, 28 minus five is usually um, tw uh, 20, uh, tw uh, 28 minus five uh, plus one. So it's gonna be 24. So here you can see we have an image of 24. Then we pass in through an activation function. We add the bias to, uh, to that. Then we apply an activation function. It can be a ReLU, it can be a sigmoid or anything. Usually on the first layer, we usually prefer a ReLU. So after this, we perform a pooling. It can be a max pooling or mean pooling or average pooling. So the size would be reduced to half. So it will be 12 cross 12. After that, again, we are performing six convolution on that same image. So from this, this image, we are performing six more convolution. From this image, we are performing six more convolution. From this image, we are performing six more convolution. Moving forward. After uh, that, we, we add all the first element of all the convolution. For example, for this, we did six convolution. So the first element will go here. The second CP2 of that, of first one, will go to this, so all the first, then all the second, all the third, and so on, all the six. So we have six feature map. And again, so here we again uh, add it, add a bias to it, add, then we supply, we apply an activation function right here, you can see. Then we, what we do is basically, uh, we have the image as eight cross eight, why you would say? Because 12 cross 12, we apply a five cross five kernel. So 12 minus five plus one is usually eight by eight. Uh, so n minus m plus one is that the formula? But if the if we are doing um, if the strides is one one one, then the size will be same. But if the stride is one two two one, then the the size then the the image size will be a little different. So yeah, we are at eight cross eight, and we do pooling. So pooling is simply uh, taking average of all the four pixels, so it's divided by two. So here you can see um, right here. So here we have the image as about um, four cross four. Now, how many we have such like? We have one, we have two, we have three, and we have, total we have six of them, right? We have six of them. So this is gonna be four cross four into how many feature maps? Six. So what is the formula? So basically the formula is feature map into whatever the size of the image is after the convolution. So after that, once that is done, then we have the regular neural network. Here you can see we have a dense neural network. This, uh, this, these are the number of neurons. You can see it can be 100, 200, 1000, 2000, whatever. Then here we have 10 neurons because uh, our output, uh, we have 10 images. We wanna predict from zero to 10. So zero to nine, I'm sorry. Then we apply a loss function and we propagate all the way towards the backward. So this is the entire architecture that um, the CNN, how it looks like. So let me quickly 
erase uh, all of this and just give me a one minute so that was a that was a architecture that i had to explain you um, now to code this in um, now you have to code it in tensorflow using low level graph api so the good thing about tensorflow is you can do guy you you guys can do it in keras and uh, higher level api but the problem uh, i mean i the thing is you you don't have the full control or the full potential so let's say i want to do some modification i want to come up with a new architecture that you cannot do it in keras right because it's pretty limited so in low level graph api you can code it right from scratch so that's what we are about to do and that's the architecture all right so let's move towards the coding uh, coding exercise so let's move towards the code how uh, let me just explain you the code. Um, let me switch. Uh, so here is the thing. I am not going to code uh, here because I'm, I will explain you because if I do coding here, if I try to code it, it's going to take a long time and this video will about will, will be about 30 to 40 minutes and I don't want that to do. I don't want my videos to be pretty long because people usually get bored, right? So uh, pretty simple. I've defined a class known as neural network. So we are coding essentially the same architecture, but with more feature map. Here we had how many feature maps? Four and six. We now we have thirty-two and sixty-four. So um, let's code it. So this is the code. So basically, learning rate equals to learning rate. So whatever learning rate you want to supply, epochs, feature map one, feature map one. Remember is the first feature map. Remember we had four uh, four convolutions, or we can say four feature map. So I have four of the. Uh, uh, so here I have thirty-two of them instead of four. Feature map two is sixty-four. Um, here we. Oops, sorry. Here we did how many convolutions? Six of them, right? So we had one, two, three, four, five, six of them. Let me just bring my pen. So we this this section we had how many we had six of them so basically there are um, six convolution but here now I'm taking sixty four so instead of six we will be having sixty four of that right makes sense load data so I'm loading the MNIST data it's nothing new so it's pretty obvious we all have done with MNIST so I'm defining so in order to I I don't want to initialize the weight again and again so I define a function so basically it returns a variable so whenever I call this I just pass in the shape and it will return me the variable so basically the weight variable similarly for the bias convolve 2d I make the function known as convolve 2d I don't want to do that again and again so I what I do is tf dot n dot convolve 2d x my kernel and stride is one by one by one that means I'm gonna be moving one pixel after the I apply my mask. So I can explain you uh, that as well if you want. Um, let me remove all of these and um, let me uh, explain you the stride process. Uh, try to do it a little quick. I want to keep my video shots a little bit short. Oops, sorry for that. So just going to reduce it a little bit so that makes sense. All right, that's fine, I believe. Now what is strides? Uh, so stride, let's say you have an image, right? then the image is so the first of all what i'm going to take a different color uh let's take a red so you're going to apply your mask here right you're going to do whatever like average pool you'll take the element and and in the new pixel you'll put it here and after that the window will move towards this here so it's moving from one pixel that means the stride is one so instead of this if i move my window directly here so what i'm trying to say is let me take a different color again let's take pink so no the pink won't be visible let's take gray so if i move my uh, window directly here on this that means the stride is two that is nothing but strides right so stride is one 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 so i'm just moving by one one pixel then i define max pooling simply as i said max pooling is nothing but take all uh, we apply the mask here and we take the maximum of all the four values and we put it here then the marks ma the, when the mask will go uh, towards the, this side and again we do it here so basically the size of image is divided by two after max pooling so that's the explanation i'm trying our best to you know explain this in a very layman term uh these things can be pretty complicated but um i'm trying my best to explain each and everything right now so uh once that is done we need to do the forward pass uh we need to propagate forward so let me bring up the architecture so guys what do we do in the forward pass uh, let me take up the black color so first of all you see we have the input image we do the convolution so step one we perform convolution then we apply uh, the activation function then what do we do after applying the activation function we do a pooling so we do a pooling function right so let's go move at the code 
so uh, I define a placeholder for my X and Y. So that's nothing but my image. So first of all, I need to reshape my image. I know my image is, uh, I have about 50,000 images and it's 28 by 28. So it has to be minus one, 28, 28, one. Now you would say, hey, Samuel, why this? Why, why this? Guys, because my image is 28 by 28, right? And this one will represent the, 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 the channel or the color. So if I have a gray channel or if, it's a, if the image is a gray, gray scale, it's gonna be one. If not, it's gonna be three, all right? Uh, so that's it and then moving forward um so i'm defining the shape of the kernel uh basically the shape of these convolutions the black boxes so it's gonna be five by five because i'm applying a five 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 by five kernel then uh one for basically the grayscale because it's they made is grayscale um then i say the uh, feature map one that means i'm gonna perform 32 of them because i have your four of them but now i want 32 of them so i say feature map one which will be five by five by five five cross five cross one cross 32 and similarly i define k2 so the k2 that is the next one this will be nothing but um five by five then this will be feature map one because it's gonna take this input which is now uh, 32 of them so 32 and then we have 64 so that's why feature map one and two so this is the first layer that i just coded so this is my first layer entire first layer that i have coded here so here you can see i'm initializing the kernel i'm initializing the bias uh, then i am doing the convolution of the kernel and the image then i add the bias here you can see uh, zoom in a little bit so here you can see uh, we are here we are adding the bias right then we apply the activation function so here you can see we apply the activation function we do the max pooling so here you can see now we are here we did the max pooling right we did the max pooling similarly for the layer 2 we define k2 b2 we perform these uh, convolutions and then the relu i mean the activation function and the max pooling so let me explain you that as well so we come here we do this then we apply the activation function we do the max pooling and now we need to do what we need to do is we need to flatten out this array so in tensorflow uh, after doing all of that we can say uh, flatten out so we want to reshape that so it's going to be cp2 that means the previous output so what i'm trying to say is this is cp2 right cp2 so cp2 i need to reshape that as uh, minus one seven by seven why seven by seven because after the all the convolution the size of the image will be seven by seven uh, and feature map because we have 64 of them here we had remember we had six of them so and the size of this image was four cross four so it will be here in this case it was four cross four cross how many guys six but now we have how many 64 of them so 64 into this size now would be seven by seven so seven by seven so here you can see just did that Oof, that's pretty intense okay now we define the weight matrix here so we have flattened out now this is our input image now what we did is we did the dimensionality reduction so initially we had 784 inputs now we are back to how many i think uh let me take my calculator <laughs> sorry for that so it's gonna be uh seven by seven cross 64 uh oh sorry sorry for that all right so um we defined our weight matrix here uh so essentially weight matrix is output by input so the input is what this these many inputs and the output is about how many neurons you want here i'm saying thousand neurons in my hidden layer uh, right this one this one is thousand so defining my input biases then just doing a normal neural network i'm adding uh, the weight and bias and then sorry i'm multiplying the weight and the uh, bi biases uh, sorry i'm multiplying the weight i'm very very sorry i'm multiplying the weight and the input and adding the bias and I apply the activation function similarly i do it for the next layer when i come here that is this layer right i do that here then the loss i define my loss I define my optimizer then i say tf dot session and then i run the global variable initializer then i run for that number of epochs i i load the data set then i feed the data through feed dictionary here you can see says dot run for i modulo 100 zero, zero. so i'm printing the accuracy and um the epoch so here you can see it's about 98.999 about 99 on just 900 epochs i'm running for about 1000 epochs so that's it for this video uh, i know it's a little bit long video but uh, i'll try to i'll try to post this code entire code on the github so you guys can play with it and you know enjoy with it develop the architecture you can do a batch norm you can do a lot of stuff you can um, improve this architecture and whatever you want i mean you can do it
right so that's it for this video hope you have enjoyed it uh, i know this is a little bit complicated but if you have any questions doubts please let me know by doing that in the comment section below i usually am pretty active i reply usually instantly uh within an hour of course uh so that's it for this video let's wrap up the video i have questions comments please post them in the comment section below you are and also this uh article is there on my github and also on my blog remember remember my blog and my article uh my blog and my github account uh the domains are usually the same so if you go to google and type somil shah 1995 uh so you can see dot blogspot.com and similarly instead of this if you type somil shah uh, i'm sorry for that and if you type the same thing somil shah 1995 and if you type github you can go over to my github but i'll try to post the link in the description that's it for this video hope you guys enjoyed it and see you guys in the next video thank you so much for watching